all here OS reviews. Recently I visited China to attend some press releases from Huawei and Xiaomi, and one thing you have to know about China's internet is there's something called the Great Firewall of China. Kind of an ironic name there, but essentially it's the government censorship on certain western sites from being accessed. So if you are checking out any Google services, including Google.com, YouTube, as well as Gmail, you get an error message saying the site just can't be reached or just goes into this infinite loop in terms of loading but never will completely render. It's really unfortunate because I know many folks use Gmail as a primary service for emails as well as use YouTube for catching up on entertainment, but that along with many streaming services in addition to news outlets from the West are just blocked by this censorship. So one way to get around this firewall is to look at VPN options, including NordVPN as well as ExpressVPN that often pop up and even now sponsor a lot of videos that you may see on YouTube content creators. However, the sad truth is as of 2023, NordVPN and ExpressVPN no longer function in China. So they will be actually blocked even if you're turning these services on and will not work. So one of the best options these days is actually to look at a eSIM that is international and essentially you are sending your data over cellular radio as opposed to local LAN, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi, which are more closely regulated. For example, if you are in Shanghai or in Beijing, you could use a Hong Kong or a Taiwan SIM, which are regions that don't have the Great Firewall restriction, like the mainland area of China. One service that I tested out was called iFree Mogo, and from there they have a lot of different international packages, even though the aforementioned Asia Pacific is the one that we're looking at. One thing to keep in mind is all of their current plans are data only, so there is no quote unquote traditional call and texting supported. However, with a data package, you could always use options like Google Voice, which are completely free. As long as you have an internet connection, you can still technically make calls and send messages that way. And aside from being able to bypass a great firewall if you are in China, another advantage of an international SIM is that you don't really have to worry about specific roaming charges. Say if you're located in the US and then you go abroad, it becomes really expensive. Plus, if you pick up one of these packages, you're able to freely hop back and forth between many neighboring regions and countries. So again, could be a good option for international travelers, either 300 megabytes for the smallest data package or up to 100 gigabytes, which will last for 100 days of service. So that can of course range and become much more expensive versus the 300 megabytes and even the one gigabyte pricing is only around three dollars so very inexpensive although it will expire in a shorter duration of time once you activate them. And in terms of coverage again the Asia Pacific package spans 17 different regions including Hong Kong, uh, Thailand, as well as again mainland China, Korea, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, New Zealand, Australia, Vietnam, as well as Russia as well. So regardless of any of those regions, the data will still be fully working. And again, if you are in mainland China, such as the aforementioned Beijing or let's say Shanghai, uh, it will technically be via China Unicom. However, it is actually registered in Hong Kong. So again, you'll still be able to access all of the Google services and the internet freely uh, using this particular plan. So anyway, in terms of some other kind of quick disclaimers, so the eSIM that is purchased will work for up to 100 days after you purchase it, but once you activate it, it will work for the aforementioned, say, three days or 100 days. That is one thing to keep in mind. So make sure you purchase it getting relatively close to when you're actually trying to travel. And also in terms of eSIM, just as a quick refresher, this stands for electronic SIM or virtual SIM. So it's not a physical SIM card anymore that you pop into your phone, but rather many of the newer, say, iPhones, as well as Google Pixel phones, Samsung Galaxy devices, all have eSIM support. It's a virtual capability where you basically download a code onto your phone. And after placing an order, you'll see a page like this, which has a QR code as well as a confirmation code down below. You need to just scan this QR code with your smartphone and it will pretty much automatically enroll the eSIM onto your device. After which point, you'll be able to see the eSIM displayed under SIMs. And if you tap on that, you'll be able to activate it. Scrolling down, make sure that mobile data and roaming, of course, are turned on and you're pretty much ready to go. Well, except for one caveat that is, at least during my testing, for some reason, even though 
this is turned on, actually none of these services are going to be able to load. If we jump into the browser here, for example, you can see that it actually will not render. It says no internet. And what you have to do, at least on Google Pixel phones, is first kind of wake up the cellular radio for this eSIM. And the easiest way that I found to do that is actually placing a phone call onto any number that you choose, even though, again, this particular service package doesn't include actual calling and texting. But if you place kind of a test or a ghost call, as I like to call it, it kind of wakes up that maybe radio or antenna, and all of a sudden the internet is now accessible. So not a big deal, but just something I wanted to point out, and perhaps not something that you'll encounter necessarily, especially on, say, iOS products, but I did want to flag this in case other folks have the same difficulty or observation. Let me know if you've encountered something similar uh, in the description box below. Regardless, now that we're connected to the internet, again, even though we're still in Shanghai, in mainland China, where Google services are blocked, we can now access our regular Google services, accessing our email, and of course, searching up Google queries using the regular Chrome browser. All of this is now possible again, even though we're still here in China. And the reason for that was because we're not connected to kind of local networks, Wi-Fi, but rather it's through cellular radio signal. And more specifically, we can tell by looking at the IP address that this is technically using China Unicom Hong Kong operations. However, if you are also streaming back lots of videos on YouTube, even 4K videos, say on Netflix, then that's gonna, of course, eat up a lot more data than just checking out your email and doing a quick search. So in those cases, I would definitely recommend at least the 10 gigabyte, if not a higher gigabyte package. If you are only using this VPN to access streaming sites, like say Netflix, and you just plan on watching or binging a lot of TV shows for some reason when you're on the road, then it actually might be a better choice to look at a VPN where you're not technically paying per megabyte or gigabyte of data. It's going to be unrestricted in terms of how much data you're using, but instead you just pay for the number of days that you're using the service. However, again, VPN is a little bit more hit or miss in terms of sometimes the service might be completely down and then you'll be kind of out of luck. Or alternatively, uh, the tunneling through VPN can slow down the internet speeds and it still might be a little bit choppy and unresponsive. But the takeaway is I'm averaging around 60 megabits per second around that range when it comes to uh, kind of the overall download speeds. So this is going to be sufficient when it comes to just, again, checking out your email, even watching back some videos in HD 1080p still feels like a relatively fast and responsive process. Even doing a little bit of gaming here and there isn't really problematic. So fast enough to get things done. I will say that 5G connectivity, again, is a little bit more hit or miss, just depending on, again, where your location is, if your phone supports that, and it will consume a little bit more power as well. Uh, but if it has it available, it will switch into that faster kind of speed as well. So something to just keep in mind, but good enough for general usage. So when it comes down to it, I would say just, again, depending on your usage, if you're like me, you're primarily concerned about missing out on important emails, as well as just doing some quick research through regular Google that gives you unrestricted access to the internet, then I think this is actually a really good option. Plus, if you're doing more traveling across different regions, you don't ever have to worry about picking up a specific SIM card for a single country, uh, regardless of if I'm in Australia, I'm going to, again, Thailand, South Korea, it will still fully function the minute I step out of the plane without having to pay extra for those uh, roaming or transition between those countries. So it works really well for those cases. And I'll also kind of take a final look here at our data usage just to give a final example over really, I would say, close to the past week or so. And in this example, you can tell that I've been doing a lot of emailing a few times a day, watching back some quick clips on YouTube, as well as just doing some quick Google searches here and there. And I've consumed still less than one gigabyte of data. But again, expect that number to be much higher if you're always turning on, say, YouTube videos and watching back 4K clips. But this just serves as an example. Uh, is it sufficient for a smaller data package or if you're wanting a larger one, if you're doing a little bit more heavier uh, bandwidth activities? But overall, when it comes to my personal experience, I would say that this kind of iFree service has been surprisingly really reliable. It kind of always connected. I was traveling through a few different regions, in fact, including stopping by in Seoul, South Korea, as well as going to Taipei and Taiwan. And in all of those different regions, it would automatically switch to those local carriers on the very top. I was able to get at least 4G LTE. Sometimes it would drop to 3G for just a moment, but very infrequent. And again, averaging around 50 to 60 
160 megabits per second in my personal experience, which is more than fast enough for all of the searching and again, emailing that I'm doing when on the go. So again, pretty reliable in my particular usage and just wanted to share some of those quick experiences here. Again, if you are planning on traveling, these international eSIMs can be a great idea. I would say international SIMs in general aren't anything new. We've actually seen a couple of those uh, even many years back, but those were physical SIM cards that you have to pop into your phone's tray. And gradually, as we're transitioning more into a digital world, all the iPhones and Pixel devices and Samsung Galaxy S devices all have eSIM capability. This is a good way to take advantage of it. You don't have to remove the existing SIM card on your home network. You just download a virtual one when you're traveling, you incur less costs. And again, in this particular case, it's actually kind of a built-in VPN mechanism if you're in China without having to pay for an actual VPN service. Uh, and in this example, also more reliable, as long as you're able to know that you're not gonna be consuming too much data by watching a lot of videos, for example. So there it is. Just a final closing note I'll mention is if you are using Google Pixel phones, one perk that you might be aware of is Google having their own Google One VPN service. So if you are subscribed to Google One, there is technically some VPN capability of allowing you to mask your true IP address when you are, uh, for example, trying to increase your privacy. However, Google One's VPN does not work in mainland China. It's only in supported Google service regions like the US. So it kind of defeats the purpose uh, to be completely honest, but it does shield your privacy just a little bit more. So that is also one option that just won't work, again, like ExpressVPN and NordVPN. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. It's been my kind of hands-on closer look at the iFree service, International eSIM. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.